<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video. Bridgerton is currently a very popular series and I have to admit that I haven't seen it yet. Well, I saw one episode and I wasn't really excited about, but I will certainly give it a chance. But however, this series sparked interest in Regency fashion and I was asked by my good friend who fell in love with this series and I think especially with a Duke of Hastings to sell Regency Spencer, which is short jacket cut just about waist level. And in this video, I will show you how I manage it. I had two days for saving the Spencer, so I always started early in the morning so that I could finish it on time. For this project I was inspired by the Spencer from the book Patterns of Fashion by Janet Arnold. I learned how the individual parts should look from the book by watching and then I used draping method to create pattern pieces. The process is very simple, it just consists of draping material over the form and then using the pins to shape material. The spencer is consists of two front pieces that go up to the back side and have two darts on each side, then the back, the sleeves, the collar and the basques. The pattern of the sleeve is very unusual, but with the book Creating Historical Clothes by Elizabeth Friendship, I easily manage the change of construction. I create a simple sleeve pattern. I measure about 8 cm from the back edge of the sleeve and I made a line up to the bottom of the sleeve. I cut this part along the line and I glue it to the front edge of the sleeve. This technique is beautifully described in the book that I have already mentioned. Look at the picture. I made a color pattern according to the instruction on the internet and in the books, but at the front edge I create a, such a small cutout as it is in the original pattern. It's a really interesting detail. For a fabric I chose this wall cotton voile and for the lining this cotton canvas with a beautiful print. I lay all pattern pieces on the fabric, I redraw the individual lines and I gradually cut out all pieces. First I save the darts and then I press them open. This helps the darts appear more balanced from the outside. Then I pin pieces at shoulder seams and back side seams and using the straight stitch I sew the pieces together. Now I repeat the same procedure and I pin and then sew the lining pieces together. Making a pleated tag at the back was a bit like putting together jigsaw puzzles. One piece you will join with another. The book Patterns of Fashion gives only a brief description of how to construct the garment, so I improvise a lot. First I slashed up the dotted line at the center back and I save in the gusset. And then I set the basque at the side of the back. In the end it will look like this. Now I repeated the same procedure and I pin and then sewed all tail lining pieces together. Now let's focus on making the sleeve. First step was gathering line over the sleeve head and then I sewed sleeves at sides. In the next step I basted the sleeve to the armhole opening and I sewed a straight stitch around the edges of the sleeve and armhole opening to secure it together. I have been struggling with a large volume of the sleeve from the beginning and I hope that I did not mess up something in the pattern but apparently in the pictures of the period Spencer the sleeves are also bulkier. 
but I'm not sure about that. Now I set aside the sleeve and I started to make a collar. I needed two pieces so the fabric is folded to double and of course I use one layer of interfacing to make the collar stiffer. With right sides together I pin and sew the top of the collar and then short side. Next step was trimming away the seam allowances, especially in the corners and the cutout in the front. And then I turned the color right side out and gently pushed the corner to create the point. You can use a point turner or another blend tool for this task. Then I pin and then sew the color to the neck edges with interfacing down. With right sides together, I pin and then sew the lining and shell fabric over the bottom edges and front sides and of course, where it was necessary, I clipped the seam allowances. In the next step, I turn the lining inside and at the neck edge, I turn the seam allowances inward and then I pin the neck edge of the lining to the collar and I use whip stitches to sew it together. Now the collar was finished and I set it aside and I started to make the cuffs. I cut out four pieces of fabric for the cuffs and I pin and then sew the top edge of the cuff and the short sides. Then I turn the cuff right side out and I pin and then sew the cuff to the bottom edge of the sleeve. In the end, I folded the seam allowances of the cuff inward and then I sew down with whip stitches. The last step was creating a closure. This pencil was greatly influenced by military uniforms. The Brandenburg bottoms closure with the piping and pom poms extending from the collar to the hemline of the front of the Spencer was originated from the military uniform of the Hussars, the former Hungarian cavalry. This style of closure was widely adapted from women's clothes. I made two rows of buttons. I sewed the buttonholes on the sew machine and then I sew on buttons on the front and two buttons on the back tail. And now it's time to try on the Spencer. As soon as I put it on, I felt like I look a bit like a donut in the Spencer because it's not the same to my size. But however, I'm happy with the result and I really like how the Spencer look like. Of course, the Bridgerton costumes are much modernized and I try to use more historical accurate pattern. But even so, my friend was satisfied. Thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, you can give me a like or comment and to see more of my videos, you can subscribe my channel. Thank you and bye.